So we have just seen how you can use IOSTAT to get information about I.O. VMSTAT is about virtual memory. And it also works with these parameters like 2.5, two, 2 second intervals for 5 polling loops. The interesting thing about VMSTAT is, is that it is giving you nice information about activity on your server. So we can see the amount of processes running as well as blocking. So blocking means it's waiting for something, running means it's just active. We can see information about memory, so swapped and free and buffers, as well as cache. So we have a significant amount of cache being allocated here. Then there's something very interesting, which is the swap columns. SI and SO stands for swap in and swap out. So this is what you want to monitor if your server is using a relatively large amount of swap. You want to know if something is happening there. And if the swap in, swap out is relatively high, you should see that here and you know that you need to do something. IO is showing BIBO for blocks in, blocks out. So that is block activity, mere IO activity. But if you want to find out about IO activity, IO stat and IO top, which have been discussed in the previous lesson, uh, provide much more useful information. Then we can see system information. IN and CS, which stands for the interrupts and context switches. Context switches is when the processor switches its attention to service another process. And interrupts uh, is the number of interrupts, uh, which is calls for attention from hardware or software uh, that the processor has received. And at last, we can see the CPU activity with the user space, the activity in system space, the idle loop, and the wait time, as well as stolen time. Stolen time relates to virtual environments only. So it's likely that you are never ever going to deal with that. VMSTAT cannot just give you information uh, in columns, as we can see it here. VMSTAT can also give you nice information uh, that is detailed about memory usage. So here we can see the total memory, the use memory, and two new parameters. Active memory and inactive memory. Active memory is memory that has been used more than once. Inactive memory are memory pages that have been allocated but which have been used once only. So chances are that you no, don't uh, really need it. And then we can see some more information about the process activity. Now VMSTAT is mining a very interesting configuration file uh, for details about memory, which is PROC MEMINFO. In PROC MEMINFO we can see a very detailed overview of what is happening in memory. There's one part of this file that I like a lot, and that is the highlighted part which is about active and inactive memory and which distinguishes between active anonymous and active file memory as well as inactive. Anonymous memory is memory that is used by programs. Uh, if you have inactive anonymous memory, uh, that is program memory. So that is memory that really needs to be there. But if it's inactive, this is a very good candidate to be swapped out. So if you have a high amount of inactive anonymous memory, uh, you might as well put it on swap space because it's not used anyway. Uh, active file is your active cache. An inactive file is all the memory pages that have been allocated but which aren't really used. So if there's a shortage of memory that is appearing, the Linux kernel can free up the inactive file memory to make more memory available. And that's about what you need to know for RHCE about memory monitoring and managing.